Do you feel overwhelmed when you realize how many photos you actually need to retouch for a boudoir session? I get it, and that's why today I'm sharing my retouching routine that's gonna save you crazy amounts of time and headache. You'll learn when to ditch retouching, how to find the right retoucher, and also how to ensure that they get it right every single time. Are you ready to make it 10 times easier to scale your boudoir business? Then let's dive in. Hey, I'm Tracy and I help photographers stay forever booked out without the hustle. Be sure to grab my free guide outlining my five best tips to book clients without Facebook ads. My first secret to retouching your photos is to wait to actually retouch them until after they've purchased the photos. After being in this industry for over 10 years, I found that retouching photos before they've actually purchased the photos is a huge waste of my time and I would say it's a waste of your time too. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and color correct your photos. But to be honest, I don't even think that's necessary. The biggest secret is to make sure you get them right in camera, but let me share another secret as well. I wanna share with you my process before an ordering session. Okay, so step one is you wanna make sure that you get this right in camera. This is pretty close to correct in camera. I did go in and make a few color adjustments, but this was basically right from the minute it came out of my camera and was imported into Bridge or however you decide to import it to your computer. So step two is to actually import your images to your computer. So I'm just gonna go in and show you exactly how I would do it. I would first create a folder. These are my models, that's why I'm showing these to you so that you can see exactly how I label them. So these are my models and then I'm going to go into Sienna's. So I have her raw and then the one with her name is actually the retouched versions of her photos. So the raw photos are all of them straight out of camera. You can see every one that I decided to keep straight in here so I would put that into raw and then we also have her finished retouched photos so the next thing that I do is call the photos now this is an older session so I don't really call them anymore I will say that one thing that you can do is use after shoot after shoot has been great for my business my associate photographer she runs the session through after shoot and then sends the chosen photos to me from there and then I take those photos and from there the cold photos directly from after shoot is what I use to run the ordering session I run my ordering sessions in bridge and I can show you real quick exactly how I do that so basically I have the photos there's only 21 here I will say I show 60 to 100 photos depending on the actual session so there will be 60 to 100 photos I bring them into bridge we're on a zoom ordering session and then what I'll do to start with is on bridge, go into view, do a slideshow. I like to have it as one second clip or like one second between photos. We run the slideshow. Step one, running the slideshow. Step two is to have her choose the photos. So the way that we would do that is go through their star right here. Let's say she chooses that one this one this one this one we're just gonna choose like 20 photos even though there's only 21 <laughs> so then we've got those so what we'll do is go over here to show five stars that brings the photos that i chose up over here round two i would pull them all up let her see let's say she decides she wants to take this one out goes to four stars and then she chooses those those seven so we run back through another slideshow just run her through the slideshow real quick make sure she loves the ones she's chosen and then from there i put the invoice in through my quickbooks and then from there we are good to go i send these to my retoucher and design the album and then we are good to go now, can you see how much time I've saved by not retouching my photos beforehand? Do you wanna know exactly how I call my images very quickly and efficiently? Make sure you check out this video, Photography Editing Tips for Beginners. The second secret you need to know is that you can scale your business faster if you are outsourcing your retouching. I decided back in 2018 when I noticed how much time I was spending actually retouching my photos that I needed to give it up. This retouching was busy work. It was time I was spending working in my business instead of on my business. And by on my business, I mean working on things that are going to help me grow and scale my business and book more clients and of course make more money. At that point, I had a lot of clients on my schedule, but I didn't have time to work on my marketing strategy to make sure that I maintained the amount of clients that I already had. 
I knew that something needed to change in order to grow my business where I wanted it to go. And that brings me to my next secret, knowing when to let go of the control in your business and hire a retoucher. So how do you know if I'm talking to you right now? How do you know if your business is at the point to hire a retoucher? Well, the easy answer is when you can't keep up with the work that's in your queue, or if you can't deliver in a timely manner. But of course, there's a lot more to it than that. You can hire a retoucher when your cost of sales is at a healthy level. That's when you'll be able to support that contractor. You want your cost of sales to be at 25% or less for a healthy boudoir business or a healthy photography business in general. If you want to know your profit margin, all you need to do is add up your total revenue for the month and your total cost of sales. And of course, let me explain what cost of sales is. It's everything that goes into creating the product. So your cost of sales are your photography lab expenses or whatever you print for the client. Maybe it's an album or wall portrait. Your contractor expenses expenses like hair and makeup artist, an associate photographer, or even an assistant for the sessions, travel to and from the session, and any client gifts or anything related to the session itself, like how you make money directly from that session. You're gonna divide that cost of sales by total revenue. For example, with a $2,000 cost of sales and a $9,000 total revenue, that means that you have a 22% cost of sales. So you would have room in your budget to hire. So to wrap it up, first things first, make sure that you have room in your budget to hire a retoucher to begin with. And if it can't, it's time for a price increase so that you can hire. And the easiest way to check the health of your business is with the TLC budget blueprint. You can grab your copy in the TLC shop, which I will link in the description below. In the budget blueprint, I also include a video so you know exactly how to use it. So let's say you are ready to hire a retoucher. Let's talk about the secret to finding one. I was actually really lucky. My retoucher just happened to reach out to me on the right day. I was behind on my retouching and I felt like I was spending so much time working in my business. I was always trying to just catch up. It felt like I had a never ending queue of clients and I just felt like I was never gonna get ahead. Of course, that's a good problem to have, but one I didn't wanna have to deal with. So when my retoucher reached out, it was just the right day. We scheduled a call, got to know each other, and we've been working together ever since. But if you're looking for a retoucher right now, today, I would look on Instagram. Let me show you how I would search for a retoucher. Now that we're in Instagram, I'm gonna look for a retoucher. So I would come over here and just type in retoucher. A lot of times they will be right here just like this. So I would just go in and look and hers looks great. So, I mean, I would probably go ahead and message her. I would message four to five different retouchers and just see who's on here. This person doesn't have a ton. So, I mean, I would go to the website and see what's going on here. I mean, I would probably go ahead and reach out to this person. They don't have their pricing on there, so I may not love that, but I would still try it again. Like I said, reach out to like four or five different ones and just see what's out there, see the pricing, see what's going on. I would probably reach out to this person too. It looks really clean and pretty. I don't like that they don't have a website, but I think I could probably still reach out to them anyway. It does look really clean and pretty, but that's how I would do it. Just go to search and just start searching for retouchers. Now I know that you might be nervous about handing off your photos for retouching. I get that. This is your art. I was definitely nervous for sure at first, but here are a few things that I know now. You are a photographer, you are not a retoucher. Your time is better spent photographing clients and making more money. Your retoucher does this for a living. They do this as good or better than you. And the third thing, your clients won't notice the little things that you're gonna notice. You might not think that the color is exactly right or you want the shadows to be a little bit deeper. Your clients are not gonna see that. But at the same time, you wanna make sure that your retoucher gets it right. Make sure that the retoucher actually understands your style. Most are gonna give you a few trial photos so that the two of you can get your style just right. You also need to understand that their process may not be exactly what your process is and that's fine. For example, I retouch my photos through Photoshop. My retoucher, she gets the exact same results that I do, but she uses Lightroom to retouch her photos. As long as the end result is the same, that's the main goal. And those are my thoughts on whether or not you should hire a retoucher. Be sure to subscribe to get notified on my next video, which is on the ultimate guide for a photographer when a client goes to you. And while you wait for that, check out this other video, best photography marketing strategies for new photographers. If this was helpful, let me know and give it a like. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.